For the launch of Granta 135, New Irish Writing, Granta and Foyles hosted Sarah Baum, Lucy Caldwell, Peggy Hughes, and Sally Rooney in a discussion about their work, the state of Irish writing, and the role of technology in literature. suggested that the writing pre-Celtic Tiger and post-Celtic Tiger are two quite different beasts, if you pardon the pun. Would you agree with that? Would you think that there's, a, there's been a sea change in, in the tone and mood of, of Irish writing post, post the, the Tiger in the South? What happened to me was that five or six years ago there were no jobs and if you were in any form of arts it was perfectly acceptable to be on the scratcher or the dull, whatever you <laughs> And it wasn't until everything went, went crash and we had to kind of look at what is the value of, of money and you know, what do we really want to you know, drive um, f- four, five, six hours a day to, to work in an office job so we can pay our big mortgage in this house in the country that we don't go to. You know, and had I had, I had a, a proper job, I would never have written a novel. Um, I think there's also an extent to which the Celtic Tiger was a time when um, every cultural voice was expected to cheerlead capitalism. And I think that has a chilling effect on good writing. And, and good art production generally. So as a writer, who would you say your ancestors, if you like, are then? Who are the, who are the writers that got you writing and, and made you excited to be, to be a writer yourself? Um, that's really interesting. And I'm not sure that I would necessarily root my influences in an Irish tradition at all. Um, I think probably I'm most energised um, by contemporary fiction um, that's being written right now. Zadie Smith, Juno Diaz, Ben Lerner, writers like that. Um, those are the ones that sort of sp- sp- spur me on in my own writing, um, which isn't to say that I don't love contemporary Irish writing as well. Obviously, Sarah, Lucy, writers like Colin Barrett and Kevin Barry, uh, very much so. You know, I'm, I'm completely in love with Elena Ferrante's novels and they're so truthful and they're so, so transgressive. I came to realise that actually you, you can write about yourself and you can write about things that happen to yourself. Um, and Elena Ferrante said in a recent interview, you know, maybe the most transgressive thing that you can do as a, as a writer, as a woman writer, is to write about your own experience. Um, I wonder if I could ask you then about the, the idea of a Northern Irish literature as opposed to the broader Irish one. You know, do, you think, do you think they're different do you, at all or not? Or one fits within I think the other? That, um, you know, so much of the really exciting energy in Irish literature is, uh, is centred down south, as we'd say, you know, where there's, there are magazines and there's a lot of arts council support and there's a lot of, um, you really get the sense that there's a sort of camaraderie and, 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 and all that's really exciting. In the north, I think a lot of the energy for, historically, has gone into poetry. In Northern Ireland, there, we're on to maybe the third, just about the third generation of Chinese emigrants. Um, there are a lot of Polish emigrants. There are even starting to be, um, you know, a lot more in Dublin, but there are Nigerian emigrants coming into the country. If you think of Irish literature, it's always that history of emigration, you know, in the diaspora. And, and I think it's going to be a real sort of kick up the arse once we get people who have come to Ireland, to Northern Ireland, who are Northern Irish, who start writing stories. And I can't wait for that sort of energy, because I think that's going to change. That's going to lift us all up, you know. It's going to make us all question things and, and, and try things in new ways. What are the things that you that sneak into your fiction and what do you try and resist? Oh, dogs. <laughs> um, but anim- no, animals in general. Emmanuel Kant said you can judge the heart of man by the way he, he treats a harmless animal. And I think that's, you're kind of writing about people, but animals are as big a part of my world as humans are. So they kind of irresistibly keep coming back, even though I try to keep them away. All my stories seem to have very troubled and troubling parental figures. And like, no, I mean, you know, no doubt, like, of course, everyone has sort of um, difficult relationships. And so I'm sure they're seeing echoes of themselves. But I wish they didn't. And I wish I would just stop writing about parents for good. And so, yeah, that's the thing I'm going to try and swear off. But I'm sure it won't work. (laughs) How do you feel individually about including the Internet in your stories or technology in general? I fucking hate the Internet. (laughs) I mean, it's, you know, it, it, it exists in things that I write because it exists. But if I can get away from it without writing historical fiction, I will. I, you know, I, I live in a really remote place and we have a tenuous internet connection so I can get email but I can't watch YouTube or anything like that. 
Um, and then the same with the phone, it comes and goes. And it's, it's wonderful, to be honest. I wouldn't want to be attached to it in a way. I only recently succumbed and got a smartphone. At the end of my story, there's, um, it's a love story set mostly in 90s Belfast and it flips to the present and um, my narrator just spurs the moment Googles the, the, the woman she was formerly in love with. And um, there's that, it's there because it, suddenly it's too close, it's sort of too easy. You can do huge things at the spur of a moment, you know. I don't know how I could possibly make literary the time that I waste on Facebook. And it's possible that like, a really good writer could actually make that very interesting. But for me, like the endless, the endless scroll through you know, news stories that I've actually looked at the night before, I, it's, it's really difficult to elevate that into something sort of beautiful or moving. So I don't think it's, it's necessary to write beautifully about um, contemporary life to include like references to technology, but I do think it's a, it's a fascinating challenge that faces contemporary writers, is how, how to make that literary.